Hello all, welcome to my first YouTube video. Today I'll be showing you how I did my herringbone tumbler. In the tutorial I will be using different colors and final than shown on this cup. But we will jump right in. The cup you see here has already been spray painted, prepped, spray painted, and epoxied. I felt it was best to do it this way in case the any of the vinyl application uh, messed up my spray paint. But I used the Rust-Oleum color vintage blush. My first cup I also used Rust-Oleum, seems to be the brand I stick to, and it was a seaside teal color. I have three vinyls that I use for this project. Black for my lines. This wood uh, paneling, I guess you would call it, vinyl. I found off a of Donkey Craft vinyl on Etsy. I'll put the link below. And then I found these black and white watercolor flowers. I printed them myself and cut them on my silhouette. We'll start weeding here. I created the herringbone pattern. I found a tiling pattern off of Google. I measured my cup, made sure that the vinyl would be 10 inches. I am using a completely straight cup, no taper. And I created a seamless background by making sure when wrapped, my two edges would touch perfectly around the cup. At this time I don't offer this for sale. Um, I really am only here messing with cups at this point. The wood paneling I used one sheet and I cut straight boxes to fit inside the herringbone panel. You'll see that later on but that was a easy weed for me there and then I'll go ahead and weed the flowers I did buy these they were single flowers but I put them together in my silhouette program to create the bunch look went ahead and covered the entire pattern with my transfer tape I made sure to leave um, some extra tape off the side to hold on to the cup. Here's the seamless part here, making sure that when it's wrapped around the cup, your edges touch perfectly. I believe the trick with these, and the only cup I will buy from now on is the no taper. It makes wrapping the tumblers so much easier. I'll remove the backing, and the paper you see below it is white parchment paper. I want to be able to see through it to make sure that my edges match up. started to act up here but I got it under control placing it on the parchment paper make sure you leave um, some of the transfer tape overlapping you'll um, you'll see it later on I did do the wrong side but I'll fix that right here cutting off some of the parchment paper so that the paper the tape I'm sorry can stick to the cup need to line them up you can see through the parchment paper making sure that my um, edges are touching I 
and I hold it tight, I removed that one strip of parchment paper, went ahead and stuck the vinyl a little bit to the cup, and then I checked again to make sure that everything was straight. Now the pattern does overlap on the top of the cup and you can see that it does not go all the way to the bottom. Um, my vinyl tends to bubble around the bottom of a cup so I knew I didn't want my vinyl to go all the way to the bottom. So there is that little bit of space on the cup that will be glitter. Once I know everything's lined up I begin to slowly remove all of the parchment paper and adhere it to the cup. Slow and steady wins the race here and make sure it is adhered. I'm going to be spinning the cup a little bit just to make sure it's... I got everything down pat. Uh, the reason I know that I could have glittered this cup first and epoxied it smooth, but I really do despise wasting glitter. Uh, any peekaboo cup I do, it just hurts my heart anytime I have to cover up paint, cover up my glitter with my paint. I just, it breaks my heart. So I knew I didn't want to glitter the whole cup. And I wanted to be able to remove vinyl without messing up the undercolor. So that's why it has been painted and epoxied. And it needs to withstand my X-Acto knife that I'll use later on. Um, you'll peel up one side of the transfer tape. Since it does overlap, lay down the other side and... It is now a seamless background. Making sure it's good and adhered, I can begin to remove the transfer tape. Um, I did not cut off the top around my cup. Um, I just pulled the transfer tape away from the vinyl. Uh, no specific reason. Just the way that I did it. I will cut the excess off the top. Here you can see that it overlaps a lot on the top and on the bottom. It does not reach the bottom curve of the tumbler. Going in with scissors and trimming down the vinyl on top as close as I can and you can see it's um, pretty seamless. These no taper cups really make this easy. I get my cups from Craft Haven. This is a 30 ounce no taper. Now I'll be removing the wood paneling squares and adhering them to the cup. So the trick with putting these on is getting my small piece of parchment paper that I can see through and putting the block onto the parchment paper first and attaching it to the cup. Leave a small edge of it off. I'm going to choose a starting point and just get going on it. This is pretty random. You or I did leave blank spaces to fill in with glitter, but it goes on pretty easy. I try to get random pieces off the wood paneling or the wood vinyl there as well so that it looks pretty organic, I guess you could say. The 
parchment trick just really lets the vinyl fall right into place on the cup. I do the middle of the cup first. I leave the bottom and the top for last. They are really small pieces, so if I can use the leftovers, I will for those parts. You can see I'm already leaving places blank, but because the cup has been epoxied and I am using this matte removable vinyl, it comes up pretty easy at the end. You'll see me take off a piece that I thought I just had too much wood in that one spot. So going along, uh, there is no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I don't. I try not to leave my glitter blank spots um, grouped together in one spot. I'm just looking, seeing where the wood is and trying to keep the glittered pieces dispersed on my pattern and this is probably the main reason I do not offer this for sale it is seamless but there is this one row when I created this herringbone pattern there is this one side of the pattern where the blocks just were a little bit shorter. You can see how much of the vinyl I'm taking off. It's just a little bit shorter uh, planks than the rest of the cup. And it is where I did the seamless where I kind of merged them together. It is not perfect but because I created it I knew what to expect and I knew that that would happen and I wasn't cutting off too much of it so it do, it doesn't it didn't bother me it may bother others but it did not bother me uh, then I went ahead the last part is doing the top and the bottom and you can see how little vinyl was applied to those tiny little blocks so if I can use the leftover pieces I'm cutting off I do And then I'll go ahead and I do the top, trying to do my glitter spots different in each section. I think each section is repeated three times. So here I'm looking over it. Um, I'm pretty happy with it I'll go ahead and trim the bottom I know that the bottom black lines are even so I will cut from black line to black line to get that straight across I can almost guarantee I'll probably get Somebody telling me I need to be safe with my X-Acto knife. Be careful. I will not say that I've never cut myself before. I'll be honest about that. But obviously I haven't learned from my mistakes. Um, and because the cup has been epoxied, I'm able to cut the vinyl and it won't remove any of the tape underneath. Like I said, before you can glitter the cup before you do this part, you just don't feel it's necessary if you're fine with covering up all the glitter with this vinyl. You can do that first and I'm sure that'll save you some time on the cup but this way worked for me the first time so I thought why ruin a good thing straightening up one point here on the bottom too curved for me. Mm, 
went ahead and did the top. Also, uh, I cut as close as I could to the cup with scissors for the top parts. Looking through it, I believe here I noticed a plank I didn't appreciate. So I went ahead and removed it. But the rest of the cup looked pretty good. Coming through with my X-Acto knife on the rim of my cup, I am cutting the vinyl as close, I mean right up to my cup, cutting that vinyl. And then we move on to the glitter. Here I'm using uh, Counter Cultures Quick Coat. I've started to use this on my glitter applications. It takes a little bit goes a long way. I do not like Mod Podge at all. If I can stay away from it, I absolutely will stay away from it. A small flat brush and I am using Bosco from Lily's Glitter Shop. I ruined her sticker when I took it off the package, so that horrible writing on that cup is mine. Gonna get right into glittering now. Each square left blank needs glitter and the bottom of the cup. Slow and steady here, applying the quick coat right up to the edges of the black, filling it in, and then applying the glitter on top of that. I will say that on this video, I am only showing you one coat of glitter I applied, but once the glitter had been applied and this first quick coat had dried, I realized I needed another coat. So it is not videoed here, but I did apply another coat of glitter after this. Just the same way, using the quick coat with the brush and applying the glitter right after. Tapping off the excess. After that second coat of glitter that I did, that brush that I'm using to tap, I just went ahead and brushed the excess glitter off of the entire cup real good. I even got a smaller brush and got right in there on those black lines because I noticed I had some glitter stuck in there. Now I won't be showing me applying the epoxy layers, but I will let you know how many go on. Um, once the clear coat had completely dried and I knew the glitter was stuck on there good, I did two coats of epoxy to ensure a smooth surface for when I applied the flower vinyl. After that second coat of glitter had been applied and I knew my quick coat was dry is when I brushed all the excess glitter off, cleaned it up real good, sprayed it with Rust-Oleum Clear Spray to make sure the glitter stuck, it dried, and then I applied those two coats of 
epoxy. So once the epoxy was cured, I found a place on my cup where I wasn't necessarily happy with the seeds of the wood grain. And I knew that's where I would be placing my flowers to kind of cover up those two spots on the cup I wasn't happy with. There are a lot of little pieces on this printable vinyl. And I had to be careful removing it to not rip any of those small leaves or petals off. It's going to be placed pretty wide, not necessarily straight up and down. I knew I wanted a lot of the cup to be floral patterned on it. So it is a rather large sticker. Slowly but surely removing the vinyl and placing it whereabouts I want it on the cup. I know once it's stuck on there it's a Hail Mary or I would have to print a new one and I did not want to waste the ink. Pretty close to one of the most expensive items I have for cups is my computer ink. That stuff adds up fast. Also with printable vinyl you want to make sure that you have pretty much you start from the middle and rub it down all the way. You don't want any part of the vinyl not adhere to the cup. Once your epoxy gets under that, it just bubbles it up and it keeps going. Uh, there was a leaf here up at the top that I kind of had a doctor. He went over the cup a bit too much and I knew I didn't want the just half of a leaf at the top of the cup. I pretty much wanted it to be one piece seen. So once I laid those leaves down, I cut that top one off and brought it down a little bit so it wouldn't look like it just ran off the cup and had its own idea. Once this was applied and I was happy with it and I made sure there weren't any bubbles in it, I applied one coat of epoxy. Um, after this, if you're happy with it, you can go ahead and put your last coats of epoxy on it and it'd be done. That's what I did with the first one. But I realized on this one that my black and white flowers matched a little too much with the wood pattern I had chosen. So I knew I wanted to do something else to the flowers to kind of make them pop off of that white and uh, black wood vinyl I have on there. So I went ahead and applied one coat of epoxy and I let it cure. And then I did one final step before applying my final coats. So it's had its uh, one coat of epoxy. It's ready for my last step. I have a Krylon rose gold uh, leafing pen I bought off of Amazon. And I just went around the outside of some of my flowers. Try to add some detailing in them. I wanted to draw the flowers away from the wood grain that was happening in the background. There were some parts on the flowers that I started to do and I didn't like the way it was turning out. So all I did was uh, grabbed a paper towel and some acetone and I wiped off what I didn't like. And you can do that on any part you didn't like with this process. Once the paint had dried on this, my final, um, I believe
believe I did three coats of epoxy on top of this. And the couple is completed. And that's the final product. Thank you guys for watching. I hoped I helped a little bit. And maybe I'll be back with another one. I'll learn from this YouTube video. As my little three-year-old says, bye-oh.